Hi everybody and welcome back to Redline. Now a few weeks ago my friend Steve who previously lent us his Ferrari FF um, for a review on this channel phoned me up and said Mark I've just bought a Porsche Taycan 4S do you want to come and drive it and I said of course I do. Now he was particularly excited about this car because this isn't any Porsche Taycan 4S. This one you see here has had a raft of upgrades. So we're out in it, we're gonna go and take it for a drive and see what it's like. Before we get into the review, first of all, big shout out to Steve for chucking us the keys to his, uh, to his Taycan 4S. Um, you can find him on Instagram, he's at AOD Supercars, um, or you can check out his company, he's got a decking company, um, it's all on deck. Um, so yeah, go and take a look. Um, and also, if you like this video today, please give it a thumbs up and uh, of course, subscribe to the channel. So let's, um, let's get into uh, reviewing this Taycan. So we're in a bit of slow moving traffic at the moment, so I thought now would be a good time to talk to you about this interior. Um, I quite like it, you know. Um, first of all, it's a Porsche, so you know you're getting really great build quality and really good materials. There's lots of leather, we've got carbon um, in here as well, and we've got a nice Alcantara steering wheel. Um, the driving positions are nice and low with plenty of adjustment. The seat is super comfy. Um, this car has the Sport Corona pack as well. And I mean, there's more screens here than you can shake a stick at. So there's one here for the instrument binnacle, one here for the center console, one here for the passenger, and then one here just above the transmission tunnel. Um, yes, lots of screens, lots of going on, lots of technology. Um, and Steve was telling me when he first got this car, it probably took him a good week to get his head around all of it, um, which I'm not at all surprised really. So yeah, really lovely cabin, lots going on from a tech perspective, but generally it's a really nice place to be. Needless to say, this is a Porsche, so it can't just be a good EV, it also needs to be a good driver's car as well. So we've got driving modes, so let's see what we've got here. There's one for range, um, so if you get low on battery, then um, that helps you conserve it. Then we've got normal, sport, sport plus, which is what we've just gone into. Um, and then you've got an individual mode as well. Dynamically, there's a couple of things that really stand out for me. First of all, the ride quality. This is on air suspension and over the bigger bumps, it just glides over them. Um, you can tell it's quite a firm, quite a rigid car, but the way it rounds off the big nasty stuff, superb secondly this steering i've been saying this for ages now and i'll say it again porsche have nailed e-pass they just have this is one of the best electrically assisted steerings available in any car um, it's so direct you get this really great sense of where the car is on the road and it's just yeah it allows you to to place the car where you want it there's not a huge amount of body roll through the corners um, as well just dynamically it's a really good package and you can have some real fun in it um, yeah I wasn't I knew it would be fun but I didn't think it would be this entertaining so I'm quite pleasantly surprised actually occupying the middle ground of the Porsche Taycan range the 4S sits between the entry-level rear-wheel drive model and the bonkers Turbo S Steve's car comes with the Performance Battery Plus, which increases the outputs from 483 brake horsepower to 563 brake horsepower with 650 newton meters of torque. The 93.4 kilowatt hour battery powers two electric motors, one on the front axle and the other on the rear to make it all wheel drive. Also at the rear is a two speed transmission, which means the Taycan can reach a higher top speed while offering sharper throttle response and punchier acceleration when it's in its sportier driving modes. For a car weighing nearly 2.3 tonnes, it can go from 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 4 seconds and onto a top speed of 155 miles an hour. The range is quoted at 257 miles and it can be charged from 5 to 80% in 23 minutes if you can find a 270 kilowatt fast charger. Steve says he charges the car at night using a home charging point which costs around £500 to install. Charging the car also costs him between £5 and £10 if he charges off peak, which saves him around £200 a week in fuel. 
It's also worth noting that we were running the Taycan on an extremely cold day where temperatures didn't go above minus four degrees, which can have a negative effect on vehicle range. Okay, so let's um, test out this performance. Oh yes, that's, that's quite fast. Yep, that's quite fast indeed. And of course, in an electric car, you get instant torque, instant throttle response, so the thing just takes off and, and goes. Yep, that's very fast indeed. Bloody hell. Okay, yes. I mean, so, I was going to say it doesn't make a lot of noise about it. Obviously, it's an electric car, but one thing I will say is that when you put it into the um, into the Sport Plus mode, you get lots of whirring noises. It sounds like, here's one for you Star Wars fans, one of those pod racers from Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, obviously no internal combustion engine here, so no wonderful V8, V10, V12 noises that us petrol heads love. Nevertheless, Sounds pretty cool. And the performance is just bonkers. Let's try some more of it. Just coming down onto a motorway slip road. You don't want to unleash all of this on a, on a country road, definitely not. You need open road like this. Bloody hell. Okay, yeah, that's quite fast. That's, that's quite fast. It's certainly worth um, commenting on the range. So when we started out, we had about 190, 200 miles um, available to us. I've been driving around for the best part of the day and we still have 57 miles left, um, which is roughly, well, 29% of our battery capacity. So yes, if you treat it nicely, it will go far. Um, but of course, the moment you get near the accelerator, bit like fuel really um, the more the harder you use the car the more of it you drink so yeah that's something to bear in mind but yeah you, you get decent range out of it so yeah so final thoughts on this uh, Porsche Taycan um, you know what I, I quite like it um, am I really saying that at a, about an electric car um, yeah, this is a really compelling package. I mean, first of all, it's viciously fast. Secondly, it's beautifully made. Thirdly, it handles really well. It's just a great all-rounder. It's a great daily driver. I still think there are some limitations in terms of um, infrastructure. If you're going and traveling a distance, then you really need to plan your route and you need to make sure that the chargers on route are, you know, the fast chargers. Um, but you know, in terms of day-to-day -day life, if you get one of the, the plugs on the wall at home, um, then yeah, you could 100% make one of these work as a day-to-day -day proposition. So yeah, I really like this Taycan. Um, I definitely think, I, I can definitely recommend it. Um, and I mean, Steve, mate, you, you, brought, you, you brought a cracking car. So once again, shout out to Steve for uh, chucking this to keys and we hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this video and uh, we'll, we'll see you in the next one. Mm.